So how did it feel to suit up as Loki again? <laughs> it was great. Yeah, I hadn't done it for a while. Um, the last time, well, it was about four years. Uh, so it was kind of amazing to to get back in the habit and and play uh, the Lokster, yeah. And what uh, what can audiences expect to see from this uh, third uh, go round with Loki and Thor, the relationship and everything? Well, it's you know every uh, every film there's an evolution of the relationship between Thor and Loki, and and uh, Taika Waititi, our director, has infused that brotherly feud with so much humor and so much spirit, and um, uh, it's kind of time to ring the changes because there's only so long that those two can 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 basically fight and. Um, and try to one up each other, and actually the stakes are so high that um, they need to they need to change things up between them a bit. You'll see. Uh, tell us about Loki's blades in the training with that. Um, well, yeah, it's interesting. Loki. Um, when I was first cast as Loki uh, eight years ago now, um, we decided that when Loki was in combat, he would have these sort of magical blades that he could make appear at any time. And um, there's a fight in the first film, but because of the his staff, which has become quite crucial in the Marvel Universe, in Avengers. I haven't fought with the Blades for a bit, so it was nice in a way to come back to that. And we had amazing um, stunt coordinator um, and fight directors and, and a whole great stunt team we used to train with all the time. Ben, what's Ben's last name? I just feel terrible for forgetting Ben's last name, but um, <laughs> well, he, was, uh, he was our uh, stunt director, he was great, yeah. Good old Ben. Perfect. So yeah. Tessa, uh, first go round. Yeah. yeah. First go round. First time MCU. Uh, how was it? Daunting? Easy? Good. No, not. I wouldn't say easy. I would say uh, you know these films present a world of challenges, but ones that I was really eager to tackle. You know, just the physicality and, and learning how to wield a sword and to gain muscle mass and the challenges of working, you know, in on, on green screen and having to create this whole world, you know, with imagination, all of that stuff. But, uh, you know, it's daunting and that's why it's fun, I think, at least for me. What as an actor did you have to wrap yourself around to get that inner warrior spirit for Valkyrie? Uh, goodness, I think just really working on the physicality and, 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 and feeling sort of confident and strong when holding a sword and, and you know, getting stronger myself, just doing pull-ups. <laughs> you know, just feeling, really spending time on stage three with the, the stunt crew and, and once you can sort of move through space, you know, doing some of that fight stuff, you begin to kind of be able to inhabit the, the space of the character. And then, of course, so much of the universe is created for you just with costume and what's happening around you. So it's, you know, you're not, you're not doing it on your own. Um, so playing such a strong female character in the uh, Marvel Universe is, uh, is always looked at uh, as a, you're going to be a role model, you're going to be looked up to by little girls. Tell me what that feels like. Yeah, I, it feels tremendous, and hopefully not just by little girls, by 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 boys too. I think it's important no, that no that, that boys look at female characters and and you know think it's something that they would like to aspire to to be. I think that's that's really important, and you know I have the the, the added benefit I think of being able to present a, a character that wasn't necessarily historically represented this way. And so there's a host of young women that look like me and their mothers write me and say, we're so happy that our, that our little, you know, that our little girl gets to see a woman that looks like her on screen. I certainly, you know, never thought that I that I would be in a in a film like this playing a superhero, and I think some of that has to do with the fact that I didn't grow up watching a superhero that looks like me. So, so that's a joy. And now this is both of them, so if we can open it up, so we get both of them in the camera. And I nice. apologize, I shouldn't have said just little girls. It should, everyone should look no. up. Um, uh, so tell me uh, your favorite. I know it's practical sets and green screen. What was your favorite set to work on? Uh, during filming? <sighs> um. You want to jump in with that? I, to... I really like the Hulk suite, which you were. I didn't spend any really time in, in the Hulk suite. Oh, you were in my apartment, though. That was. It cool. was in your apartment. Yeah, yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I <laughs> mean, in the, the set, in this, my set yeah, apartment. Yeah. Um, Valkyrie, uh, Scrapper One Four Two, or Val has an apartment on Sakaar. Loki ends up there in chains. It was pretty rad that apartment. Yeah, that apartment yeah. was cool. There was lots of funny little tidbits. She's not the cleanest, you know, person. So there's sorts of relics all over the yeah. place. I think at one point there was a human arm. I don't know if that's still in the movie, but she's just like, 
looking for stuff and you know yeah. chucks an arm. The Sakarian stuff was great because that that felt um, Thor and Loki are cast out onto this alien planet called Sakaar, which is presided over by Jeff Goldblum as the Grand Master, and Val is there, and and it was really inspired by. Uh, the the illustrations of Jack Kirby, who was such a influential um, comic book illustrator for Marvel, and it, it's it's really out out there and and out of this world. And so the colours of those sets, there's uh, uh, when Loki and Val fight, there was a sort of in this kind of cor uh, the hall of slightly strange um, jigsaw puzzle piece. Um, I don't know what you'd call it really. It was like, but it was a very very colourful, otherworldly set. Um, kind of felt like we were in Wonka's Chocolate Factory or yeah. something, you know? Yeah, and then Hulk Suite, where he where he lives, is sort of this lush, you know, like bachelor pad, but everything's huge, obviously, because it's Hulk. He has a hot tub and a circular bed and a bar, which I, of course, Val enjoys immensely. But, yeah, you know, you as an actor, you're always trying to suspend your own disbelief and thereby the audiences. So it's it's always a pleasure to walk onto a set that just is so you know lived in and, and is telling a story. It makes, your, it makes your job easier. Uh, a lot of the folks that I've talked to already have talked about how uh, Taika was very uh, encouraging of in, in, uh, improvisation. Mm. And, uh, there's going to be some stuff possibly on the cutting room floor that we see. Is there any insight to some fun stuff that happened on set that? I think Taika's whole... Um, uh, I think he's he's immaculate, really, at capturing the spontaneity of improvisation, mm. and um, that's what he loves most about being a filmmaker: is understanding the structure of the story, um, you know, inspiring his actors to understand it too, but then along the way to play with it to see what comes up in the moment, because really that's the magic. If you can capture, if you can capture things that characters would say as they think it for the first time, I think it always comes off as fresher than than anything that was ever scripted and that spe specifically works with his comedy it's it's such a fun film it's it's uh it's so funny every character is funny in a way and so it made it feel it made the set feel very light which is lovely mm. everyone's playing the game playing the game with everybody uh one word answers for taika how is it working with taika one hilarious word. goofy <laughs> Uh, last question is, uh, what do you each hope that people walk away from the theater uh, after seeing this film with? I hope that people have a great time. Um, it is it is so entertaining. Um, and I, that's all Taika. Um, and Chris and Tessa. But it's it's so colorful and feels like it's something that's very true to, to Marvel and also to the characters. And it's epic. It's just a great time. I hope people enjoy it. Yeah, I think, you know, Ragnarok is literally the, de the destruction of the old and the, the birth of the new. So I hope that people feel like this, this new world order that we've created in this universe, this zany thing is exciting and a place they want to they wanna stick around for a while. Okay, Marvel fans, I've got a bonus fact for you. Did you know that the Avengers shawarma post credit scene was added at the last minute? The hilarious throwaway post credit scene at the end of Avengers Assemble, not the Thanos one, the shawarma one, was not filmed during principal photography. Uh, in fact, the la late addition to the script was filmed two days after the film premiered in the US, as that was the only way Joss Whedon could reunite the cast. Chris Evans, in the middle of filming Snowpiercer, had to cover his beard with his hand. <laughs> What's your favorite Marvel movie? Let me know in the comments below. To watch more cool videos like this, the moment they are online, click on the subscribe button now and don't forget to also click on the notification bell as well. See you next time!